Hey guys, my name is Becca and welcome back to my channel. In today's video, we're going to work on block number two for the So Becca So Along in 2020. And today's block is the Jewel Box. I did mine in contrasting green batiks. You can take a look at it there. Look how beautiful it looks. I'm quite pleased with how nicely these blocks are turning out. And I'm very happy that having that white background in there is helping these batik colors pop. So what you're going to need fabric wise for today's block is a little bit of background and two contrasting fabrics. You're going to cut four three and a half inch squares for this light. You're going to cut four three and a half inch squares for this dark. And then you're going to cut one six and seven eighths for your background and one six and seven eighths for your darker print. And then you're going to cut that six and seven eighths in half. Uh, diagonally and sew them together so that they make half square triangles. I'm going to walk you through all of that and putting this block together. So let's get started. So pro tip for this, I'm going to give you some measurements, but when you sew your quilt together, you're going to want to make sure to use a scant quarter inch so that you get a true 12 and a half inch block when you're all done. Here is our pattern for the jewel box. This is pattern number 52 of our book. And we're going to follow the instructions here. You're going to need your background fabric and then two contrasting fabrics. Now, if you want to in this jewel box, these little white squares that you see on the pattern, you could actually make that your background. So you could have your background in these corners and then your background kind of going through here and then just a color fabric there. Um, I probably won't do that. In fact, I know I won't do that because I really want these four squares to pop and not blow blend into the background. So what I'm going to do is get some background fabric and then two contrasting fabrics. Here are the fat quarters I've been working with and I really like the idea of keeping a green and a blue together. So I think I'm going to pull this. This is right in the middle. It could be both. But I think I'm going to go with these two. There's a bit of a contrast there and it'll look good. It'll be an emerald jewel box. So first things first, I'm going to go over to my iron and press these nice and flat so that I can get my cut pieces out of this. Let's get our fabric down here. I'm going to angle you down and we're going to cut this together. Our pattern here is going to work with three fabrics. Let's take a look at this block up here because this is an example of a finished block. We've got our background fabric in the upper and lower corners. And then going through the middle here are two contrasting fabrics. The pink is going to be one print and then the white is going to be another print. Now they have this set up because every cut of fabric is a different letter. It's not the print. This is fabric B and then these two little squares are fabric C. And then these white ones are D. And then this is your background fabric. What we're going to do is cut out some background fabric because we need to make some triangles here. And then we have two prints and I need to decide which of my two prints I want to be in the middle. And I really think what I'm going to do is put the darker on the outside. So where you see the pink, I'm going to have this dark green. And then these whites going through the middle, that's going to be this lighter green down here. And then of course I'll have my white up here so that I have my background fabric incorporated. All right, so now that I know what's going where, let's take a look at the cutting instructions. It tells us for our background fabric to cut one square at six and seven eighths inches. And this ruler is only six and a half inches wide, but that's okay because I can turn it this way and get six and seven eighths. So I'm going to do that. And I'm going to cut part of the way through, make sure it separates okay, and then push my ruler up and line up that edge of my ruler on the cut edge I just made and finish it all the way through to the other side. Now what I can do is cut a seven inch square out of this. I can cut that at seven inches or a little bit more because I want to cut it down a little bit. 
6 and 7 eighths lines up right here. So it looks like from this side I only need to cut a teeny little bit. And then this way we need to measure it 6 and 7 eighths. So all of this needs to come off across the whole thing. And then I'm just going to slowly move the ruler up and make sure that it's still on the 6 and 7 eighths line. There we go. So there's my square, but it wants us to cut it corner to corner so that we have two triangles. So I'm just going to take a minute and make sure that I've got this lined up very nicely. You can just make sure that you see the ruler on one corner and on the other. There we go, two triangles. So that's going to be our background fabric. We'll set that over here to work with. Next we're going to work with the darker green because this is going to go on the outside of our fabric. It wants us to cut one six and seven eighths inch square and then four three and a half inch squares. So I'm going to open this up. Okay, let's cut our three and a half inch squares first. And I could cut a strip, but I really want to make sure that as much of my fat quarter is intact as possible. I only want to cut from it when I need something. So we're going to cut three and a half here. And I can square it up in a moment. There's one three and a half inch. Okay, this one is a little wonky, so we're going to go here. I didn't clean up my edge, so there we go. That's that one. There's another one. Here is another. Remember, we need four of these. And then here is our last one. And then once I have these cut, I am going to go ahead and um, clean these up a little bit because there are a couple areas where it was just a little over. So I'm just going to take an extra minute to square these up. See, there's a teeny bit that needed to be cut away from that. There's one. There's two. Here's three. Here's three. And here's four. That's not the right edge. Okay, so now I have four of my prints cut at three and a half inches. We're going to set those over with my background triangles. And next I'm going to cut out of this big fat quarter a six and seven eighths inch square. So sometimes we just need the right tool for the right job. And that means we're going to bring in a bigger square ruler. And I'm going to measure at just over seven inches, probably about seven and a quarter, so that I can square this up after I cut it. I know it's a half inch of fabric all the way around, but it gives me enough room. Now I'm going to trim it down to six and seven eighths. And for this one, they want us to cut that into two corner to corner, just like we did with our background square. So now I have two triangles. 
Now we need to cut out our fabric for this and all we need from this one are three and a half inch squares and we need four of them. So for this one what I'm actually going to do because I saw that that three and a half inch piece was so close to an entire strip I'm actually just going to fold it this way and I'm just going to cut a three and a half inch strip off this end. In fact I'm going to make it a little bit wider than three and a half inches because I want to be able to clean up and now I need to clean up this edge over here because I got a straight edge on one side I did not get a straight edge on the other side and if I do it this way I can save myself some time cutting all right, now that I've got my straight edges cleaned up, I'm just going to come in over here. I've got a torn edge from where they tore this fat quarter, so I'm going to come in at like three and five eighths cut, and then I'm going to turn it around, and I'm going to put the three and a half inch line on there, and then come in over here and cut. And I got both layers with that, so that's good. Put that in my trash pile. I've got two of the four that I need. Now I'm going to come over and line this up on that cut line, three and a half inches, and I'm going to cut here. And what that does is it gives me where the fold was a good chunk of fabric that I can put with my scraps for this that I, so I can use it for a future block. Okay, so now we're going to take our two triangles. We only have two. We have our background and one of our prints. And we're just going to take these to the machine and we're going to stitch right along here. And then we're going to press this to the dark side. And then while we're at the machine, we're going to take these little units and we're going to make little four patches out of them. We're going to take two of our one print and two of our other print and we're going to make two of these units and we're going to press I don't know to the dark side I think we'll figure it out when we get it there so we'll make two of these four patches two of those half square triangles and then we'll come back here and see how the entire block layout will come together we're going to make our little four patches and the reality is I can sew them however I want with either the dark one in the upper left or the light one in the upper left because when I'm ready to put this into my quilt, I just have to turn it so that this one is in the right position. So I'm just going to start sewing my pairs together and then sewing these pairs into two four patches. Make sure to sew this with a quarter inch seam allowance. And because the dark one was on top the first time, I'm going to put the dark one on the bottom the second time. And that'll just make it a little bit easier for me when I'm sewing these together since I'm chain stitching. Let me take you out a little bit further so you can see the machine a little bit easier. Now I'm going to finger press them to the dark green side. So I'm just going to lay the dark green up on one side and press it back and then dark green up on the other side and press it back. And now I'm going to lay them on top of one another. And Batik's always finger press so nicely that I don't feel like I have to go to the iron with every single seam I press, um, but you are more than welcome to go iron those seams before you press them together. I'm just making sure that my seam in the middle is nice and nested, so I'm gonna hold it with my fingers, and then as my needle approaches that junction, as soon as it takes a bite right before or after that sewn seam, because I can see the thread from the stop, the side, just gonna stop and I'm going to adjust the fabric down here and then keep going. And what I'm doing is making sure that the raw edges at this end are nice and matched up. I'm gonna hold that until it gets all the way through the machine. Then I will cut my thread 
and open it up and I should have a nice point on my four patch right in the middle. And there's one. I'll set that on my ironing pad because I will press it before I put the entire block together. And then I'm going to do the same thing that I just did. I'm going to arrange my four patch and put my pretty sides together. And I'm going to sew one of the pairs with the dark side on top and one of the pairs with the light side on top. I'm just going to take a moment to make sure that all my raw edges are nice and lined up. Feed it into my machine and sew it with a quarter inch. And then I'm going to do the same thing that I did before. I'm going to finger press both of these units to the dark side. And then I will lay them right sides on top of each other, sandwich the seam in the middle, put it in, and sew at a quarter inch. And then once I get to that seam, I'm just going to adjust the fabric down here. And there we go. Then I am going to finger press it up and lay it on my mat to press. And now I need to sew my triangles together. And so what I'm going to do is take a seam right down the middle here. And now I need to be careful when I do this because this is going to be bias edge, which means it's going to be stretchier than normal. And so I don't want to pull or hold the fabric tightly at all. I want to let the machine do the work. I'm just going to very gingerly lay the fabric together and then put it in the machine. So I'm just going to feed a leader through. And then I'm going to put my fabric in. Don't ask me why leaders help prevent your fabric or make it a less of a issue. Um, but it does. It seems like when I sew with leaders, my corners don't get caught in the feed dogs as frequently. Now we're going to sew these. All right, here is my second triangle. Just going to line up my fabrics. I'm going to put this in so that it's in a little bit. Stand. Here we go. Now I am sewing with a scant quarter inch, so when I'm done with this, I'm going to have to take it back to my cutting mat, and I will have to square these up. But first, let's go iron. So I know that each of these blocks are going to need to trim up to six and a half inches in order for them to yield a 12 and a half inch block. So what I'm going to do is just measure all of my units really quick and make sure that they're measuring at about six and a half inches. And again, if it's a little bit smaller, that's fine. We'll make it work. But if it's a little bit bigger, we want to trim it down. Anything within an eighth of an inch of what you need it to be will be fine. So there's one block. There's another block. And now for my four patches. 
This template is exactly six and a half inches, so it works out quite nicely. I just have to lay it on top of the fabric. Now this one's going to come just an eighth of an inch inside. So, and when I measure it up, I'm actually there we go, looking at where the points are coming in. Yep, this one is an eighth of an inch too small. I don't know how I managed to do that. I must not be sewing with a small enough seam. Or the pattern's wrong. Yeah, we'll go with the pattern's wrong. Yeah, that's it. <laughs> Alright, we've got all of our blocks laid out nicely and so the trick here is that the lighter color needs to go in a diagonal line and then what ends up happening is you put these in opposite corners so that it looks like this and then you just sew these two together and then these two together and then the that row together so you basically have a four patch and it looks like a jewel box this looks so pretty right now let's put these together and these together and go back to the sewing machine. I'm going to sew the first set together and I'm actually going to turn this around so that my half square triangle is on the bottom. I don't, I mean the top. I don't want the half square triangle to go in first. So I'm going to take a minute and just line up my corner here with this corner and make sure that these edges and these edges around the outside are nice and matched up. That way, if my block is a little bit short, it's going to come out in this seam allowance or this one, but my block will still be nice and square. So we're going to go and match up along those edges. And I did say I wanted to sew with the triangle on the bottom, so we're going to do that. But this time we're going to sew with a scant quarter inch because apparently I'm sewing with too big of a seam allowance and this one wants to come up on me so we're just going to poke it back down tell it get in place and then we'll sew it there we go I'm going to press the fabric towards the four patch in these. <clears throat> There's one. And then I'm going to set this over here. We're going to make our second one and it's going to go together like this. And for this one, we're going to make sure the fabric along the bottom and along the outsides lines up. So when I put this together, I'm actually looking down here at this corner. So when the white triangle goes on, I want to make sure that it's matching up nicely with my light fabric. And then I will sew a quarter inch down. When I get close to where this triangle is, I'm just going to hold it with my awl or my stiletto, I think that's what it's called. And that just kind of keeps the fabric down and keeps it from bunching up before it gets into the needle. And then for this one, I'm going to press it towards the four patch. So we're just going to nudge it over with my finger. And now what I've got are these two pieces that need to be sewn together. And because batiks lay nicely with just finger pressing, I don't need to go to the iron before I sew them together. So I'm just going to nest the seam in the middle. And then I'm going to take a moment and make sure that the edges on the outsides are lined up because I did have some problems with my block squaring up. And I want to make sure that the edges on the bottom are lined up too. So I, I care more about the perimeter edges than I do the seam edges. And it's just the little, a little tip that I try to use when my blocks aren't exactly the size they need to be. 
It's of course easier if you get them sized right, but sometimes we're not perfect and we have to make up for it in other ways. Once it starts stitching, just going to feel for that seam in the middle to make sure it's nice and nested because that's what's going to give me a perfect point in the middle of this. And now I'm going to take this over to my mat and I'm going to press the seam either open or to one side. Doesn't really matter. You do what works for you. Okay, so I think I figured out a way to show you this the ironing mat. Um, we're going to first lay the block on the mat and then just kind of smooth it out with my hand to make sure all the seams are nice and flat. And then I'm going to pick up my iron and I'm just going to kind of set all the seams that I just sewed. You can't tell I'm not picking it up drastically. I am just lifting it at like a centimeter and then setting it back down. And then I'm going to mist this. I'm going to mist it really good. And I'm going to come in with an iron and I'm going to focus on heating up all of those spots of fabric where I just got it wet. And there we have our jewel box. Our block is all done and this is what it looks like. It's gorgeous. I'm really loving that I chose this plain white background because it's really making the color in these batiks pop. I can't wait to see what these all look like when this quilt is completed. If you're having fun with this so long, make sure to tell your friend the best way you can help support my channel is by helping me grow. So share this playlist, share this video, share this channel with your quilting friends. If you like this so long, give me a thumbs up. Don't forget to post pictures of your blocks in the Becca's Babes group and hit that subscribe button, but don't forget to ring the bell so that you're notified when I post the next block in video number three.